Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. Picking up where we left off, Amy's undergoing an attack from the green lung. Or at least I think it's a green lung. But anyway, once things subside, a dude in a top hat comes over to her and tells her to embrace death. You should consider yourself lucky. It's only a matter of time before you pass on into the next world and liberate yourself from this misery. Yeah, this guy's a member of a death cult called the Acolytes of the Reaper, or the Reaper Cult if you want to be all derogatory about it. But anywho, he tells us where they're located. It's at some church that we really have no business going to until later on in the game. But damn, is it not impressive to pay this place a visit. But nevertheless, it's a bit of world building. There's a death cult. It's popular. And people wear top hats in it. Because maybe before the city was bombed, it was like a hub of historical reenactors and museum pieces. And one thing too, this is the only bit of religion we have in this game. I guess in the 20 years after the apocalypse, all other major world religions just simply died out. But anyway, Emmy isn't interested in joining any death cults. At least not quite yet. Instead, she's going to try to get more vaccine. So that means she's going to have to go ahead and talk to Tiberius again. Ah, uh, you return! Yes, and I delivered the letter to Danton. Excellent. You have made contact with them. Good work. So, do you have any more jobs for me? Yes, as promised. As I'm sure you've gathered, Danton is the head of a group of terrorists bent on destroying the government. I need you to be my spy. So things are escalating rather quickly now. We've gone from being a male person to becoming a spy. Of course, Amy's like, no, I don't want to do it. But then Tiberius is like, you know I have vaccine, right? And then Amy's like, oh, I got the green lung, so I need it. Kind of over a barrel. Okay, I'll become your spy. I wish you luck in your task. <laughs> of course I have a backup plan. Now behave yourself and let us continue with arithmetic. So Amy is now working for the man, rather literally, as in I'm pretty sure that Tiberius is the head of state around here, although I'm not entirely sure. I know squat about this universe's government. All I know is that Tiberius wears a powdered wig and has a bunch of guards that look like they're out of some American Revolution reenactment school. And oh yeah, he controls access to vaccine, somehow. I, I really don't know how he's able to do that with all these guards and their primitive weapons. It's just, it's kind of a doozy, but hey, people seem to go along with it. I, I don't know why. Maybe they're just intimidated by the, all the powdered wigs. Oh well. Let's go ahead and enjoy the rebellion now against these, are, are they, I was about to call them fascists, but I don't know what they are. These guys who control vaccine. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to join the rebellion, right? Well, you're either a terrible spy, or your loyalty to Tiberius is quite lacking. Yeah, Amy's a pretty bad spy, and Danton's clearly gonna kill her, but then Amy explains, uh, I need vaccine, and then Danton's like, oh, so you're just desperate. That's why you're doing this. Oh, you're not actually evil. So let's try and manipulate you to join us. You know, you're right. Having another double agent would be beneficial to us now that we've lost Milton. But I'm not going to make you this offer for free. I'd hate for Tiberius to outbid me for your loyalty. Instead of hoping your lottery ticket gets chosen, how about you end up with as many actual doses of vaccine as you want? So Amy's now going to become a double agent for the rebels. Kind of remarkable. This is their vetting process. Oh, you're desperate for vaccine. Hey, join us, and maybe you'll get some vaccine if we get into power. You know, promises and all that. No guarantees. I'll tell you more as soon as you help us out with something. Are you familiar with the junk vendor and butcher in the market? Gordon and Gus? Of course. They're good friends of mine. Then it may interest you to know that they work for me. I had no idea. Yeah, perhaps now Amy needs to reevaluate who her friends really are. But nevertheless, Daton says, hey, fix these people's problems and then you become a rebel. And we're like, okay, we'll do it. Well, let's now go ahead and meet the two fellas that need Amy's help. Guy number one, Gordon, the junk salesman. And this is what he needs. You think that for all the crap I collect, I'd have found something to at least try and make her a more effective mask. So Gordon needs a gas mask for his daughter. I'm sure something like that isn't exceptionally rare or hard to find in this post-apocalyptic world where gas masks are needed not to die from the green lung. Or at least that's a belief. Hell, for all I know, it could just be a fashion statement. Maybe everyone around here wants to be goths. Only place I haven't had a chance to check out lately is the old Centrex factory. Even though I'm not sure there'd be much of use in there. I just want her to be safe. Losing my wife was bad enough. I can't lose her too. I know, Gordon. I know. 
I'll keep an eye out for what you need. You just try to relax. But not only will finding the gas mask help us get in good with the rebels, it's also going to net us something pretty sweet. What is it? An aristocrat guard ran through here earlier and dropped his flintlock pistol. It got a bit damaged, but I figured you might be interested in messing around with it for parts. It appears that Gordon forgot to say the yes in parts. No, that wasn't bad editing in my part. That's how it is in the game. And speaking about the game, let's go ahead and meet Amy's other friend who she has to help to join the rebellion. Very convenient that everyone loves Amy. My god, she should star in her own sitcom. Well, well. Well, 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 look who's not wearing a shirt. And I kind of think it's cold around here. After all, look at what Amy's wearing and look at everyone else. They're all wearing jackets and stuff. But now nah, this guy, this guy, I think, I think a song said it best once. I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt. Yeah, I think I may have to do the rest of the video like this now. Just saying, I'm just trying to fit in. And speaking of fitting in, I guess the thing around here is to join the rebellion. Because every single one of Amy's friends is a member of it, besides Amy. Again, she may need to reevaluate her friendships, considering all her friends are off joining the rebellion and she's just slowly dying from green lung. In fact, I don't think she ever told anyone that she had green lung. Huh. So maybe Amy isn't really friends with these people. And these are just acquaintances that are very friendly. Because this is like the Midwest during the apocalypse or something. And you know what else reinforces my stereotypical view of the Midwest? Amy now has to save right said Fred's family farm. Did your sheep get sick? What happened? Ran out of feed, so half of them starved to death. It's not a pretty picture. I haven't been able to find anything else they'll eat. The farm's gone barren, and now the only thing I'm feeding is ravens. Well, you heard that notable voice actor there. We have to save the family farm by finding something for sheep to eat. How the hell are we gonna do that? But hey, at least along the way out of here, we can find a gas mask. It's just hanging out in the scarecrow. Seems a bit wasteful. Well, we got the gas mask, so Gordon's quest is pretty much resolved. But we still gotta save the family farm. I don't imagine attacking a phone booth would help us in any way. If you can't hear singing, but you see their eyes glow red, then, whoa, Amy, what are you doing? Just letting these flowers breathe. Don't get near the broken glass, okay? What a responsible adult. And hey, we're outside of her place. Yeah, Amy lives behind here and lets kids play outside in front of her store. Again, everybody loves Amy. It's nice to be home. I just wish I could forget about everything and stay in for the rest of the day. Honestly, there's pretty much nothing we need here, but it's a good touch. It's nice to see that Amy has a house, and there's a car in here that she wants to restore because it belonged to her daddy, so it kind of like represents her father's relationship. Or she just wants to fix a car because no one else has a car, and she can just drive away from this crappy place, I guess. Now that we are a bucket richer, we're gonna go ahead and fix up that gas mask for Gordon. The one that we got from the Scarecrow. Turns out, the filters don't work. So once again, and quite literally, we're gonna have to take a page from the Dave Gilbert School of Game Design and look something up. I just find it to be incredibly fascinating that the supposedly oppressive and tyrannical aristocrats don't stop this guy from giving out knowledge to the people for free. You think they wouldn't be cool with that, you know, being all oppressive? And oh yeah, Knowledge Moses over here, he's a part of the rebellion. I mean, who the hell is not a part of the rebellion at this point? You know, considering that Amy knows a lot of people who are rebels, I'm surprised that none of them vouch for her. You'd think it'd be easier than having to run around the map and do a bunch of quests for people. But then again, it wouldn't be much of an adventure game now, would it? But oh well. Let's go ahead and follow the instructions in the book. And oh hey, that kid who was doing the graffiti, he lives in like a glass factory now. Yeah, he ran away from home because, you know, he doesn't want to be a burden on his parents because this is a cruel post-apocalyptic world. Now we're cooking. What? You're actually gonna cook? No, it was a figure of speech. Oh, thank goodness. I still have nightmares about that lamb stew sometimes. I'll make it again if you don't shut up. Copy that. So, did your experiment work? Don't be so nosy, Denby. Nice! The wood burned long enough to become activated carbon. What? Spend some time reading Nelson's science books and you might learn something. Okay, so now I'm a bit confused. Whenever Amy talks out loud, is she actually talking out loud? Like, other people can hear her? Is that what's been going on this whole game? When I've been like, Amy, look at this item, tell me what it is. She's just been saying this stuff aloud? My god, she's like a crazy person who just talks to herself. So Amy's a bit cray cray. I guess that explains why she dresses the way she does. 
But insanity aside, we are now done with the quest. We got all the items necessary to fix the farm. It's just a weed. We give it to the old dude. And he's like, hey, this weed just grows anywhere like a weed. I should have thought of this earlier to feed the goats. Because, you know, they'll pretty much eat anything. And we're like, high five, old man. I'm going to go leave. And as with Gordon, we just give him the gas mask and the carbon. And he's like, oh my god, Amy, you're the most wonderful human being ever. Aren't you so happy that we're friends? And speaking of friends, we're now friends with the rebels. I assume you've managed to sort things out with our suppliers? Yes. You've done well, Amy. I think you'll get along here just fine. Huh. Who would have thought that these rebels would take a double agent's words at face value? Well, then again, it seems like just about anyone can join this rebellion. After all, the majority of the people we have met so far have been a part of the rebellion. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised those kids jumping rope outside were rebel spies too. Thank you for helping our suppliers. As you can probably tell, recruitment has been slow. Probably because most of the population has already been recruited. That letter you brought us came from our contact in the Ministry of Medicine. It contained extremely valuable information. They seem to blindly and completely trust Amy now. And in fact, are going to give her an incredibly important and complicated job. I mean, if I was Amy, I'd just walk away right now because I'd be like, whoa, whoa, this is day one. Why are you giving me all this heavy stuff to do? I need you to infiltrate the Ministry of Medicine and confirm what this letter says. God damn, these people really think Amy is special or something. Maybe she has like a protagonist tag on the back of her head and people are like, oh, she's the main character of this story. So let's give her the most important job because it really doesn't make much of any sense now that I think about it. You might be like, oh, she's working for Tiberius, but Tiberius is the Minister of Energy. He has nothing to do with the medicine. So you think it would make a bit more sense if she was working for the Minister of Medicine then she would have an excuse to go there, but no, instead she has to pull like some James Bond 007 breaking and entering stuff. Feels like this is a task better suited for like, say an actual spy or someone who had access to all these things, rather than some random mechanic who just solved a couple of her friend's problems. What's the plan for getting me into the Ministry of Medicine? An excellent question. You know how the wealthy have contracts with the aristocracy based on their support when they first formed? I have a vague idea, sure. If a government supporter were to show signs of green lung, the aristocracy would waste no time in sending a doctor to treat them. I want you to go to Fripp Square. My sources tell me that a notable supporter has recently been showing symptoms of the plague. His name is Silas Harrison. He should be visited by a doctor very soon. Find out when and where the visit will take place. Then, intercept the doctor, disguise yourself, and enter the Ministry of Medicine. Once you've done that, you'll locate the central storage room where they keep the vaccine supply. I suspect that's where you'll find what we're looking for. Wow, how do they expect Amy to be able to do any of this? She's a goddamn mechanic. Well, I guess we won't give it our best try now. Let's head over to the Ministry of Medicine and hope for the best. You know someone named Silas Harrison? Silas Harrison? The name sounds familiar. But then, I see plenty of names on a daily basis. I have to write the name of all scheduled appointments here in my ledger. Well, of course that means we're going to have to steal the damn thing. What was that? What a mess. I told them this would happen eventually. <sighs> Let's just have a look at this ledger. Here we go. Silas Harrison is being visited by a doctor this evening for a green lung treatment. This information could be very important to certain people. Might be a good idea to take it with me. So they store confidential medical information with the sign-in sheet. That does not seem very smart, aristocrats. That does not seem very smart at all. Because Amy could just give this confidential information to a newsman. Yeah, this guy's like a newsman. He just shouts the news over the intercom system. Kind of like a radio. Except, well, with loudspeakers. Interesting. Attention citizens, the following is an important news bulletin. Silas Harrison, noted government philanthropist, has contracted green lung. He is due to begin medical treatment this evening. Anyone who has had contact with Harrison is advised to monitor their symptoms and to notify the Ministry of Medicine if they begin feeling ill. This concludes the news bulletin. Please resume your normal activities. Yeah, I'm really beginning to doubt the oppressiveness of this aristocracy, considering that the newsman just broadcasted personal information about one of their supporters in a public forum, just out there. And he doesn't seem to be worried at all that the guys with the little three-point hats are going to come after him. Yeah, I don't think too many people are taking her villain seriously at all. 
So whatever happens to the newsman is of no concern for us. Because him broadcasting this news over the intercoms has caused two flappers from a golden wake to start talking about the dude, thus allowing us to find his mansion. Because there's no other way to find a mansion around here. They don't have yellow pages anymore, folks. It's a post-apocalyptic landscape with flappers. Can you believe Harrison kept his disease to himself? I know. I was just at his manor last week. Now I'll need to go to the ministry and get checked. Everyone on Threadson Street will. He should know better than to throw parties if he's got green lung. We'll cue the James Bond music because we're going to sneak up on an old man when he's getting checked up by a doctor. Down, 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 down. Hey, I already had some right said Fred in here. This video is going to be claimed. I don't want it to be double claimed. I don't know how that works. A claim within a claim within a claim. Who would win? Time to do a little peeping. Good evening, Mr. Harrison. What seems to be the trouble? You know damn well what the trouble is. I've got that blasted plague. Hmm. What symptoms have you been having? Last week, the coughing started. Since then, it's only gotten worse. And yesterday, I hacked up some blood. I've had a fever all of today and haven't felt like eating anything since yesterday. Not to mention, I haven't been able to sleep a wink. Hmm. I see. Have you been in contact recently with anyone showing symptoms of the disease? Well, two weeks ago I was relaxing outside in my yard when some vagrant came by to ask if I could spare any food. Well, naturally I told him I couldn't, but he became belligerent when he heard that and spat in my face. So it seems like people can come and go as they want in this universe. Hell, Amy can just come and go as she wants. She's in the rich part of town, and yeah, sure, she's sneaking and staring into a window, but it's not like any guards have stopped her or asked for papers or anything. Again, this aristocracy needs to learn more about how to oppress people properly. I don't know, maybe they need to take out some books from Knowledge Moses, because this is just a dog and pony show right now. Restricting freedom of movement, censoring the press, I mean basic stuff, aristocracy, you just can't hoard vaccine and only give it to rich guys like this dude right here. Yeah, he's gonna get his vaccine because, you know, he's rich. And they just give it to rich people. There we go. You should feel like a new man in just a few hours. Now, I'm going to leave an appointment card here for you. Just bring it to the Ministry of Medicine when you're due for your next vaccine dose. Oh, hell yeah, we're going to steal that. Oh, hell yeah. So now I'm stealing an old man's only means of getting more vaccine. Oh lord, he's rich, they'll take care of him. Jesus, Amy. Do you not know how rich people work? They get whatever the hell they want. So now that Amy's stolen the cards, you can just go waltz right into the Ministry of Medicine, no questions asked. Uh, hello miss. May I help you? And lo and behold, the very first person that we meet in here is a member of the Rebellion. How convenient for us. And he tells Amy, Girl, you need to get some new threads. Go to the lockers, pick whatever fits you, go see the doctor. And that's what Emma does. Good afternoon, Miss Wellard. So Doctor never takes his mask off, gives Amy the shot. She's clean from the green lung for one month. Now there you are. You should notice a decrease in symptoms within the hour. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, Miss Wellard? Yes? I swore an oath to do no harm and heal the sick, so I would never turn away someone seeking vaccine. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The doctor's like, oh, I'd never turn anyone away who needs vaccine. So then what the hell's the whole point behind having the goddamn laundry system if all you need to do is see a doctor? Then nobody figured that out up till now. They're like, oh God, how do we get vaccine? I don't know, there's this really complicated lottery job system where your number could be drawn, or you could just see a doctor directly because they swore an oath not to turn you down. My God, this whole world has fallen apart. Well, let's ruin it some more by opening up central storage and discovering a grand old conspiracy. My God, there's enough vaccines stored in here to treat the entire population for years. God damn it, aristocracy. The first mistake you made was to clearly label the boxes as vaccine. Jesus Christ, it's like you're not even trying to hide the fact that you are hoarding vaccine. On that note, so ends part two of the over-analysis of Shardlight. I'll be back with the next part before you know it. Or if you're in the future and I've already made it, you can just watch it right after this one. Huh. You crazy future people. And do we have flying cars yet? Yeah?